This panorama shows Ingenuity Mars helicopter at Valinor Hills, which was acquired by Perseverance Mars rover. The helicopter, the first aircraft to achieve powered controlled flight on another world, sits just left of center, a speck-like figure amid a field of sand ripples. Ingenuity damaged its rotor blades during landing on its 72nd and final flight on January 18, 2024. Perseverance Mars rover used its camera on the end of its robotic arm to conduct a focus test on this rock on Mars. A key objective for Perseverance's mission on Mars is astrobiology, including the search for signs of ancient microbial life. The rover will characterize the planet's geology and past climate, pave the way for human exploration of the red planet, and be the first mission to collect and cache Martian rocks and dust. This panorama shows part of the path NASA's Perseverance Mars rover took through a portion of a boulder field. With the help of its self-driving autonomous navigation system, Perseverance traveled across the boulder field much more quickly than previous rovers could have. Small impact craters usually have simple bowl shapes, but sometimes more complicated shapes can occur if the target is unusual. The crater in the center of this image is unusual because there is a wide, flat terrace between the outer rim and the inner section, making it appear somewhat like a bull's eye. Crater shapes like this can occur if material underground changes from weak to strong. In these cases, the level of the terrace shows where this change occurs. 
In the area covered by this observation, there are other reasons to suspect that the upper material is mostly ice. Terraced craters like this one show us how thick this ice is as the terrace formation show us where the ice meets the underlying rock. This promontory juts out of the walls of Victoria Crater. We can see that the upper portion of the crater wall contains a jumble of material tossed outward by the impact that excavated the crater. This vertical cross-section through the blanket of ejected material surrounding the crater was exposed by erosion that expanded the crater outward from its original diameter. Also below the jumbled material in the upper part of the wall are layers that are relatively intact from before the crater causing impact. Near the base of the promontory are layers with a cross bedding, intersecting with each other at angles rather than parallel to each other. Large scale cross bedding can result from material being deposited as wind blown dunes. This view shows the first seven holes that the Mars rover's rock abrasion tool dug on the inner slope of Endurance Crater. The rover was about 39 feet down into the crater when it took this image and the view is looking back toward the rim of the crater with the rover's tracks visible. The tailings around the holes drilled by the rover show evidence for fine-grained red hematite similar to what was observed elsewhere in Eagle Crater on Mars. Multiple types of rocks and rock formations are visible in this image. The mountains in the distance are the foothills of Mount Sharp, an 18,000 foot mountain at the center of Gale Crater. The hills are probably 10 to 15,000 feet high themselves. The varied formations testify of the great age of Mars. Gale Crater itself is thought to have been formed more than 2 billion years ago and these mountains after that. The different types of rocks here must have been formed under different conditions and we can infer that this region has undergone dramatic changes over long periods of time. At times, new layers of sediments were being deposited and other times erosion was taking place. 
thousands of feet of sedimentary rock seen in this image is quite astounding. Given the present climate of Mars, it is hard to imagine how such large amounts of material could be moved around, deposited and eroded. This is why past conditions are thought to have been quite different from those we witness in the present. Mars rovers have all confirmed that the past conditions were likely much wetter and the atmosphere on Mars likely much thicker. Even so, the great variety of rock compositions, textures and formations speaks of an even more geologically complex history than most astrogeologists had hoped to find. With a width of about 2 feet across, this meteorite is one of the largest yet found on Mars. Analysis of the meteorite's composition using the Mars rover's Alpha Particle X-ray spectrometer confirmed that it is rich in iron and nickel. This incredible panorama shows the location of several prominent geologic features on Mars. At the top left and running about a third of the way to the center of the image is a portion of the Delta Front, a river delta that billions of years ago fed the lake at Zezero Crater. Below and to the right of that is a ridge called Felifu. Farther to the right at the top of the image is the distant peak called Santa Cruz, which is geologically interesting since it has mineral signatures seen both from orbit and by the rover consistent with alteration minerals, primarily clays. Near the top at the far right is a portion of the route Perseverance took to get to this location. At the time, Perseverance was traveling south on the outside of the Sita geologic unit.
the pitted outcrop in the upper half of this image as seen from this angle is about 7 feet wide and 20 inches high. The texture with its cavities sets this outcrop apart from other outcrops in the area. A closer inspection could reveal information about whether it is a volcanic or sedimentary deposit. Cross bedding seen in the layers of this Martian rock is evidence of movement of water recorded by waves or ripples of loose sediment the water passed over. The cross bedding here shows evidence of small climbing ripples that migrated on top of each other. This suggests that currents of water entered into a lake basin, possibly flowing down the front of a delta and then spread out across the lake floor, slowing down and depositing sediments. Layered sediments are the key to the puzzle of Martian history. They tell us about the conditions that existed when the sediments were deposited and how they changed over time. The image here shows an eroded mesa made up of rhythmically layered bedrock that seems to indicate cyclic deposition. The layers are accentuated by recent dark sand deposits that have accumulated on the benches of the brighter sediments. The plateau is topped by a younger set of layers that appear to be finer and less blocky than the older layers below, suggesting a different depositional environment. Similar layered sediments are also found in nearby craters in the area. This view shows an outcrop called Olympia along the northwestern margin of Erebus Crater. The outcrop exposes a broad expanse of sulfate-rich sedimentary rocks which were formed predominantly from wind-blown sediments but some also formed in environmental conditions from damp to under shallow surface water. Perseverance Mars rover captured this video of the Ingenuity Mars helicopter's flight on Mars. During this pre-flight test, Ingenuity took off, hovered at an altitude of 16 feet and rotated to the left before touching back down. The mission conducted the short pop-up flight to check Ingenuity's navigation system.
This panorama shows details of the sedimentary rocks that make up the Vera Rubin Ridge. This distinct topographic feature located on the lower slopes of Mount Sharp is characterized by the presence of hematite, an iron oxide mineral which has been detected from orbit. The rocks making up the lower part of the ridge are characterized by distinct horizontal stratification with individual rock layers of the order of several inches thick. Scientists are using such images to determine the ancient environment these rocks were deposited in. The repeated beds indicate progressive accumulation of sediments that now make up the lower part of Mount Sharp although from this distance it is not possible to know if they were formed by aqueous or windblown processes. Close-up images collected as the rover climbed the ridge will help answer this question. The stratified rocks are also cross-cut by veins filled with a white mineral, likely calcium sulfate, that provide evidence of later episodes of fluid flow through the rocks.